This is an introduction into unipolar depression video. So depression itself is classified under the DSM-4 as a mood disorder. It's actually an affective mood disorder characterized by feeling, sadness, and general withdrawal from those around us. Unipolar depression is a low sad state marked by significant levels of sadness, lack of energy, low self-worth, guilt, or related symptoms. You must have no history of mania, and it's not a reference to normal reaction to being upset at an event. So, for example, being upset when somebody dies isn't necessarily unipolar depression. Unipolar depression is a specific mood disorder. It's very different from schizophrenia because it's non-psychotic. The depressed person understands the difference between imagination and reality and recognises that their own depressed mood may be irrational or inappropriate, but they just can't help feeling the way that they do. Please don't confuse depression with bipolar depression, sometimes called manic depression, in which the person goes from periods of depressed moods to, persons of ma to periods of mania, energy and restlessness. They're not the same. So features of UPD are the facts about UPD. So unipolar depression is the most common mental health disorder. It affects 3.5 million people in the UK. And according to the British Psycholog Psychological Society, nearly a fifth of British adults have reported an episode of depression. That's 19% of the population. Depression is more prevalent among, among women, 30% of women rather than men, which is 15%. Depression is reported by 27% of divorced or separated people compared to 20% of people who are single and then 16% of people who are in stable relationships. People in lower income households are more likely to report depression compared to wealthier households and the most at risk age group is 50 to 54 years old. Mild depression has a limited negative effect on your daily life, whereas major depression interferes with daily life, it may interfere with eating, sleeping and other everyday activities. Some people may experience only one episode of major depression, but others experience several episodes in a lifetime. And this can lead to hospital admission if the person is at risk of harm to themselves. Postnatal depression is different from the baby blues. Many new mothers experience a few days after birth. The feelings of anxiety and lack of confidence last only a couple of weeks, whereas postnatal depression can leave new mothers feeling completely overwhelmed with panic attacks or negative feelings toward their child. This affects one in 10 mothers and usually begins two to three weeks after the birth. You may also have come across seasonal affective disorder or SAD, which can last all winter until longer days bring more daylight. When it's mild, it can sometimes be called as winter blues. SAD can interfere with moods and sleeping and eating patterns. And it's seasonal affective disorder effect is the psychological term for moods and emotions. So an affective disorder is a mood disorder. Symptoms of unipolar depression fall into four categories. Affective symptoms, which is depressed mood, feeling of worthlessness and guilt, uh, pessimism about the future, and a lack of interest in things that used to be enjoyable, are all reported with people with depression, and this is called negative effect. Cognitive symptoms, other symptoms include fatigue, difficulty concentrating, indecisiveness, and these are all seen as mental symptoms that aren't to do with emotion. You may have social symptoms where people with depression often abandon hobbies and pastimes, work and study. They may withdraw from relationships with friends and families. You will have physical symptoms, so people with depression often exercise, or often experience loss of appetite or sometimes an increased appetite along with unexplained aches and pains. They may move and speak slowly and there may be changes in their sleep patterns, so sometimes they can sleep all the time or they can't sleep at all. Be careful though, everyone experiences some of these symptoms at some times, usually for a brief period. What makes depression different from having a bad day is the intensity and the duration of these symptoms. The DSM-4 states that either depressed mood or loss of pleasure, plus at least another five of the following symptoms out of the list we've just discussed, must occur during the same two week period and have persisted longer than two weeks. The DSM-5 requires at least five of these symptoms is evident for at least two weeks to diagnose a major depressive disorder. There are two key symptoms in the DSM, depressed mood and a loss of interest. And at least one of those has to be evident in order to make a diagnosis. The severity of the diagnosis is based on the number of extra symptoms and the degree of dysfunction that they create. The DSM-4 used to have a bereavement exclusion preventing the diagnosis of major depressive disorder in those who had recently lost a loved one. The DSM-5 though removes this restriction, so a recently bereaved person can be diagnosed with depression. 
this controversial change is evaluated. The, the ICD-10 requires four symptoms for mild depression, six for moderate depression, and eight for severe depression. These are three key symptoms in ICD-10. So depressed mood, loss of interest, decreased energy. For mild or moderate depression, two or three of these must be in evidence, and for severe depression, all three must be evident. 